Hey guys, and welcome to another video. First of all, I just want to say I am so, so sorry for not posting a video last week. I was incredibly, incredibly busy. Um, you know, I know lots of you, like, you're on half-term or Easter holidays even, and, you know, you should technically have more time, but that just meant I was just so, so busy. Um, I had lots and lots of revision to do, and if I wasn't revising, if you watch my latest video on my channel, Bit of a Fangirl, you will see that I took part in a beauty pageant, and I also had, like, a massive dance show, and that was last Saturday in Cambridge, and so we left on the Friday to go stay there, and, you know, that, for all of that, for all the preparation to get, like, costumes and, like, accessories and makeup and all this kind of stuff pretty much just took up all my time when I wasn't revising and so I had hardly any time to do any videos, so I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, but today's video is something that has been highly requested by lots of you guys and it is some tips for science. I know that a lot of, um, obviously GCSE students, science is compulsory for you all, and whether it's, you know, physics, chemistry or biology, sciences are very, very popular for A-levels. So I have come up with a couple of tips with a few, a few from my friends when I asked them, which should hopefully be helpful to you guys. Some of these things I have said again and again and again, and I'm sure you guys are going to get sick and tired of me for banging on about it, but they are just what I find and lots of other people find really, really helpful in order to get the really top marks for sciences. So first off, something that I've spoken about probably three, four times on this channel is your specification. Um, for those who don't know what your specification is, it's pretty much your syllabus. It is a list of things that you need to know at the end of your course. And the way that I see it is that the exam board can only test you on things from this list in your exam. And so technically, if you know everything on this list, you should be able to do pretty well for your exam. And um, you can find your specification on your the website of your exam board. For example, if you took, I took OCR 21st century, if I type in OCR, um, I go onto their website, I go into, uh, if you go into subjects, and then you go into whichever science it is, and you can see whichever course you're taking, it will have your specification. And they're not particularly long. I think that's one thing you need to make sure, you know, if you are going to use a specification, make sure you remember that these are just purely the bare detail. You know, if you know, you know, everything by hearted from your specification, you're not going to get 100%, you're not going to get an A star. But if you understand that you need to know all the topics stated in your specification, and you, you know, you learn all of that, then you should be pretty good. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. It's so, so important. And it's super helpful. Um, one way that's really nice is if you wanted to print off your specification and say as you went through it, highlight it or cross it off or tick it off, whatever you want to do, so you can see, you know, just how much you've done and how much you really need to work towards. And so that's a really nice visual way of it. Um, number two is notes. And one of my friends recommended that if you wanted to do notes, you could use a CGP book. And these were so, so popular when I was taking my GCSEs. It was that thing where like almost like 90% of the year had one for every single subject. And um, I think the reason why people like them is that it's so concise in terms of the notes are pretty much already made for you. I know you can get the revision guides and then you can get the textbooks. Um, you know, just make your notes however you like them. I've already made a video on, on how I make my notes, but, you know, a little, a few things you might want to be looking at are maybe spider diagrams, if you want to get, like, some big A3 piece of paper, or just stick two A4 pieces of papers together, and just make a massive mind map on all the different things you need to know. Um, you could always do flashcards. For me, they don't really work, but for others, they are super duper helpful. Um, my favourite kind of way of revising is something that is super suited for me, for others maybe not so much. And it's basically imagining that in front of you is someone who doesn't understand the topic. Maybe, you know, someone your age or a couple years younger who, you know, they don't understand it and you need to teach it to them. And it can be on anything you like. For example, you know, chemistry, if you're doing like fractional distillation, you know, if you're... The way that I see it, if you can teach something to someone to the extent where they can understand it, that shows that you understand it. And, um, you know, if you feel like you're teaching it and you're suddenly going, actually, wait, maybe it's this, or I'm not quite sure on that, that means that you need to go over and check that, you know. 
Um, so that's something that's really, really helpful for me. So I know it's a bit weird, you know, you're just sitting in your room talking to, you know, an imaginary person, but it's super helpful and for me it just highlights the kind of areas that you need to work on. Um, another tip, oh yeah, definitely keywords. I think this is vital when it comes to science, you know, with subjects such as like history or English, more like essay based subjects, those, you know, it's more techniques for them in terms of your writing style, whereas with science, keywords are so, so important. You can know all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't put those keywords down on your paper, you will not get the marks. And, you know, if you look at the mark scheme, you'll see, you know, it says that it will underline it or it will just purely have the keywords that you need to include. You know, for example, biology, you're talking about enzymes, make sure you use denature and not killed or like, died or any of that kind of thing, make sure you're really specific and you use the terminology, you know, that is, has been given to you and just, yeah, otherwise it's really annoying. Imagine if you, you understand the whole thing, but if you just don't have those keywords, you will not get the marks. So make sure, you know, you look at your mark schemes, you look at your textbooks, all of that, and note down the keywords that you need to remember. Um, next thing, I've spoke about this so, so, so much, past papers. You know, I think just as much as the specification is your best friend, so are the past papers. I know in terms of past papers, you know, there aren't that many online. No matter what kind of, like, subject you're doing, you might have about, I don't know, five, ten past papers out there. And I know that that is a limited amount, so what I would suggest you do is do all of them. You know, after you make your notes, done all your revision, go through past papers, mark them, see which bits you understand, which bits you don't understand, and then once you've done that all, chances are there are lots of other exam boards which also have past papers, and I know some people don't recommend using other exam boards because there might be things that you don't need to know for that, or, you know, they might have different things in their syllabus or specification, but there are, you know, some areas that are overlapping with exam boards and, you know, if you just scroll, th scroll through a past paper from another exam board and you notice that there's, you know, some kind of topic that you need to know, um, you might as well do the question. It's the very, you know, it's similar, it's at the same kind of level of um, like difficulty, so you might as well do it. And then what I'll do is after you've done all of them, maybe a couple of days before your exam, you can go over the previous past paper, and hopefully if all your revision has been done well, you'll get 100%, you know, technically. Um, but yeah, so definitely use the past papers just for your practice on timing, on exam style, you know, all of those kinds of things. You know, you know look at the look at the question, how many marks is it worth, is it a state kind of question, is it a describe and explain and analyse, those kind of keywords and the, you know, the amount of marks each question is worth really gives you an idea in terms of how much depth you need to go into and what exactly the exam board are expecting from you. Um, uh, oh yeah, finally, don't compare yourself to others. I know a lot of people after Easter holidays will be talking to friends and some friends will be like, oh, I worked every day for five hours, or someone will be like, but you might be like, I only revised for like a couple of hours each day. Don't be worried. You know, as long as you feel confident in what you've done and you feel like you're going at a good pace and everything's going okay, then that's perfectly fine. Don't compare yourself to others. You know, those five hours they might have done might have been a bit wishy-washy than your two hours. Or, you know, maybe you're just better at that subject than they are, I don't know, but don't compare yourself. You know, only if you feel like you're super behind and everyone else seems to be doing loads, loads more than you, then you might want to kick it in, but otherwise, don't compare yourself. Um, also, finally, just a couple of websites that I find super helpful. These are more for, like, A-level than GCSE. I know GCSE, there was, um, Doc Brown is super duper helpful. I think that might just be chemistry, and obviously BBC Bite Size was really good. Um, I can't remember what else I used, but in terms of A levels, I take chemistry and biology. Chem Guide is an absolute saviour for chemistry, um, especially organic chemistry, which is something I find really difficult. Chem Guide is brilliant. Um, S cool, as in like school. That's quite helpful as well, especially for biology. I use that a lot, you know, in terms of different diagrams and things. They've got lots and lots on their websites. And also, when I'm looking for kind of revision material 
or other kind of like practice questions, A-level biology, which is a website in itself, super duper helpful. And I'm sure there are plenty of different resources out there. Also, um, once again, for A-levels, definitely biology, check out Crash Course, which is a YouTube channel and they post lots and lots of videos. They're really good revision videos, they're really animated, go through keywords, those kind of things. You know, there are so many re resources out there, whether it's like online or in a textbook or whatever, but do make the most of them. And yeah, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, if you want me to make any other, I don't know if you want me to do one for maths or one for English, you know, whatever kind of videos you want, please do let me know. Please do comment down below what kind of videos you would like. Please do give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to The Student Room for more awesome content. And why not check out my own channel, which is Bit of a Fangirl. Um, yeah, that's all for today. And once again, sorry for not posting last week. Super busy, but I will be back on track from now on, I promise. So yeah, that is all from me. And I love you guys so, so very much. Bye!